the third thing he, this, he said to them there, which is where we're going today, he said, are you there? Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2. Is God blessing somebody? Amen. He said, this is how their, their destiny, whatever they build, will stand. That foxes cannot bring it up. Number one. What was number one? Would they, what do these evil Jews? Would you recognize yourself as I can do all things through Christ? My strength is not in myself, it's in Christ. Number two, would they fortify themselves? Would you run to the rock of your salvation? Number three, show them there. Will they sacrifice? Will they sacrifice? Will they? Our God is a God of sacrifice. What brings the power of God on the scene at any time is sacrifice. Amen. If you ever want to see the power of God in your life, then you have to. If you want to see the power of God on display, there needs to be what? A sacrifice. If you, if we, if you don't bring a sacrifice to the altar, God will never show up. Oh yeah. If you want God to come down on the altar of your life and your affairs, there need to be what a sacrifice in Exodus chapter 20, verse 34. He said, An altar of earth shall thou make unto me, where you offer your burnt offerings and your sacrifice. Exodus chapter number 20, verse 24. 2024. 20, 20, An altar of earth, Exodus 20, 24. An altar of art will thou make unto me what? And sacrifice thereon your, your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come to thee and bless you. Amen. God will never show up where there is no sacrifice. Amen. Many people don't know God. You have to know the God you are serving. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. That's where he records it. That's why he will come. He comes to where the sacrifice. In 1 Kings chapter number 18, there was a contest between Elijah and the prophet of Baal. And people were hurting between two opinions. Is God God or is Baal God? 1 Kings 18:21. They were hurting between. That's what people always say. Is God real? Is God not real? You cannot see the realness of God except there is a sacrifice. How long will you hold between two of you? If God be God, follow him. If God be far, and they answered him not a word. They were just looking at him. Then he said, this is how we're going to know. Give us two bullocks. You can be following. Take one for the prophets of Baal and give me one. And then, in verse number 24, he said, call on your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answer by fire, let him be God. He brought them to his territory. He knows that his God answers whenever he sees sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The God that answered by fire, what? Let him be God. And all the people answer say, yeah, it is well spoken. We want to see. There are people who want to see what God will do in your life. But it's your sacrifice that will bring God on the scene. Oh yeah. Look at verse 30. And Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. Because the prophet of God, they did all they could, nothing showed up. They caught themselves, lacerated themselves, no God showed up. Then he said, Come to me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired what? The altar of the Lord that was broken down. Do you, does the Lord have an altar? He said, An altar will you make to me? There I will come and bless you. Many people have not seen the blessing of God because they've never raised any altar Amen. or sacrifice for God. Amen. So there is no point of contact. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. Even if you have a private jet or a private plane, it cannot land here. Yes, sir. That's true. It will never land on this street. No. If a jet is going to land, he must go to a tarmac that is built for it. Yes. True or false? True. true. Uh, God has his own landing place. Amen. It's called the altar of sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He said he repaired the altar of the Lord. That was what many people's altar are broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Unto whom the Lord, unto whom the Lord, word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and made a trench about the altar. 
as great as will contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid them on the wood. And said, fill four barrels with water. And they poured it on the burnt sacrifice. Somebody said the burnt sacrifice. Burnt sacrifice. And on the wood. You see, you want fire and you are adding water. <laughs> That's to tell you that the God we serve is supernatural. Amen. Nothing can. When God sees sacrifice, He will bypass all human uh, analysis, all human reasoning Amen. to bless you. Amen. He said, "Put, put the sacrifice there. Pour water. He didn't say pour gas. He didn't say pour, <laughs> pour, pour, kerosene, pour uh, any inflammable thing. He said, pour water. Make it impossible." For God to move. When, no matter how impossible a thing is, once there is a sacrifice, God will bypass all impossibilities Amen. to bless his people. Amen. Oh, yeah. And that is what's going to happen in your life. Amen. Are you there? Yes. What verse are we on now? 34. 34. And he said, do it the second time. <laughs> Crazy man. <laughs> And they did it the second time, and he said, Do it the third time. Wow. Pour water on it until it is so soaking, soaking with water, not gas. <laughs> and the water ran around the altar and it filled the train. That was an impossible case. Hmm. And it came to pass what? At the time of what? Offering, Offering of what? The he evening sacrifice. He made that, the time, sacrifice, the hmm. time. Sacrifice has. A place. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice has a time. Some people do the right thing at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. But there is nothing like being in time mm -hmm. to do the things that you need at the right time, at the right season. Mm -hmm. Can I hear amen? amen. Uh, many people run to God when they are in the midst of problems. Yeah. You don't start practicing to be a, a champion in any Olympics. Mm -hmm. In the midst of when the Olympics came, before Olympics, you need to have prepared. Amen. <laughs> you don't start planning to fight a battle when the battle started. You'll have been jogging, doing exercise long before the battle comes. Amen. But many people, it's when in the midst of their problem, Lord, whatever you want me to do, God said, when, when I was speaking to you to be ready, <laughs> you never listen to me. Now, whatever, I don't want you to do anything because you didn't listen to me. That's why because at the beginning of the year, because we're going to go into a year we have never been before. Mm -hmm. The only person that knows the end of the thing from the beginning is God. Mm -hmm. So before I go into the year, God said, yes. raise an altar and make a sacrifice so that anything that happens in the year, I, I will make the cooker pass straight. Amen. I will fill the valleys. Amen. I will bring level the mountains. Amen. I will make you successful in it. Amen. Are you watching this? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It came to pass. Hey, 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 something is about to come to pass in your life. Yes. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came there and said, Lord God of Abraham and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done this at thy word. Hear, O Lord, now, that this people may know that thou art the God that has turned their hearts back again. Then what? The fire of the Lord fell and consumed what? The burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and lit up. He licked up the water. He wow. licked up all the impossible situation. He licked it up. I don't know what it is that you think is impossible. God will lick it up. Amen. By his fire, God will lick up every disease, infirmity in your body. God will lick it up. Lift it up. Amen. Once there's a sacrifice, once there's a sacrifice, we were having a turnaround conference sometimes back here, and I was telling them about sacrifice. And I said, Bring the sick. And they brought a the lady that was on the wheelchair for 10 years. And I looked at her. God said, That is the easiest thing to do. Tell them about the sacrifice. So I said, Give your sacrifice. That lady will walk. You are looking at me like, Make her work first. I said that's easier. It's easier for her to work no, than for you to give your sacrifice. <laughs> if the sacrifice is the difficult one, the working is the easiest one. <laughs> they were looking at me. I didn't even bother to mind it because what is going to bring God is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Once sacrifice comes, God will leak. 
paralysis, Amen. leak infirmity, Amen. destroy the impossibility. Amen. And he did. Yes. No struggle. Mm. When, when, was, when the sacrifice came, I said, God, what should I do? God said, tell her something in her ears. So I bowed down and I told her something like that. And she smiled. Then I said, you believe it? She said, yes. Okay, then get up. And she just got up and started walking. Mm. It makes it so simple. Amen. You're going to see the wonders of God in your life. Amen. Many people have not seen the power of God because they don't understand that the fire of God only falls on the altar where they sacrifice. It's the sacrifice that attracts the fire. Mm-hmm. If you want the fire of God in your life, let there be sacrifice on your altar. Amen. Oh yeah. On your altar. Speaking of Jesus, Jesus, we say Jesus is powerful. Jesus is powerful only because he sacrificed his life. Jesus is not powerful because he's the son of God. No, he, he is powerful because of the sacrifice he made of his life. Amen. Hebrews 10, verse 12 to 14. Hebrews 10, 12 to 14. He said, but this man, after he offered what one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand. Are you there? Hebrews 10, verse 12 to 14. Hebrews 10, 12 to 14. Are you there? This man, after he offered what was sacrifice for sin, sat down forever. What? <laughs> On the right hand of God, from henceforth till all his enemies what? be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever. He sat. After he sacrificed, he sat. People have fought Jesus, they have fought the church. Every, everyone who fights the church falls for the church. Because most of people who fight the church, they can't sacrifice their life for anything. I've had people say, oh, the Bible will be extinct. Christianity will be over. They say they print the Bible under their, on their top of their graves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you seeing that? But this man, he offered one sacrifice. And now he's sitting. Your time to rest has come. Amen. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. For by one offering he has perfected forever. There's an offering that perfects everything Amen. in our lives. Amen. Thank you, that grace to make to release it will come upon you. Amen. So you can see perfection. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 25 to 26. Hebrews 9, 25 to 26. Now, nor, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end, the world he appeared to put away the sin. What? By the sacrifice of himself. You know what makes Christianity powerful? It's the sacrifice. The, the only religion on earth, if you want to call it, where the leader actually went to commit suicide is Christianity. Jesus knew he was going to die, and he went to die. Most of the leaders, when they know they're going to die, they don't go. They change. They change. They change course. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. All the sermon that Jesus preached, very powerful sermon in the Bible. Not one of them can save you. The only thing that can bring salvation to man. Because if Jesus is an orator, orator, there are many orators, many Greeks, powerful orators, too. But the one that saves is the one that sacrifices. Amen. Yeah. You know, you know, Christianity's power is in the sacrifice. You know why the church doesn't seem to have power right now? People don't want to sacrifice nothing for the gospel. Nothing. Nobody. They don't want to sacrifice anything, and they want to see the power of God. You can never see the power of God where there's no sacrifice. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you now by the grace of God, I came here full time. I had a, I, I'm an engineer. I went to school, but God said, give up everything to come and serve me. When I didn't even know where my next meal was going to come. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. My children were, my, my children were uh, four, four and two years, or is it three and four and two years? Five and three. When I left them, the devil said, look at them now as you're going. You will never see them again. I looked at the devil and said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sacrifice. Oh, yeah. I'm a full-time minister. 
Somebody say, take my car. When, when you have a need, come and say, I will never need it. You have, to suck, you have to learn to go hungry, to have enough. Why many people are leaving Christianity right now and joining other religions? I don't believe that should be true in Jesus' name, but they say it, statistics, I don't know whether, you know. Because the other religion, they are willing to sacrifice. If somebody strapped himself with a bomb now, say he wants to die for his God, all of us will take off. Nobody will remain. <laughs> he is trying to die for his God, but you are trying to leave. You don't want to die for nobody. Wow. That's why there's no power in Christianity. When we tell you to fast dry three days, you say, ah, I can't fast even one day. <laughs> well, when there's no sacrifice, how do you want to see the power? God, the God we serve, is a God that moved by sacrifice. Amen. Jesus. He said, for Jesus, you know, there's one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ, who offered himself as a ransom for all. He gave himself. Say, we are supposed to die. Now, the only way you will live is when Jesus comes to trade his life. And he went and traded his life for you Amen. so that you can live. Right. That was a sacrifice. Amen. That's why people are willing to die for Jesus. When the disciples saw that Jesus died, they were willing to die. Amen. And that's why the disciples, they said, look, we, we, are, we are ready to die for this cause. That's why the gospel got to us. Because they, we were willing, most of them were beheaded. Yeah. Most of them died. Hmm. That's why Christianity had power. Why Christianity is failing now is that because most of us in the church, we don't want no sacrifice for nothing. Oh, wow. if, there's, if there's no air condition here, some of you will have some long face me. <laughs> <laughs> How come this place is hot? How come this place is hot? <laughs> Jesus went to hell hmm. in order for you to make heaven. Amen. To take the keys from the devil. Amen. You know, what the enemy pollutes is, you know how the enemy pollutes the sanctuary of our strength? Is to make sure there is no sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11, watch this, verse 31 to 32. Daniel 11, are you see here? Yes, sir. Daniel 11, verse 31 to 32. It says, Daniel 11, mm -hmm. verse 31 to 32. I want to move fast because... They are always depending on you in the house. Those on, on, on Zoom, they don't see you, so I can be talking to them. <laughs> it says, and, and arms shall stand on his path, and they shall what? Pollute the sanctuary of strength. And what? How did they do that? And take away what? The daily sacrifice. When they take away sacrifice, they pollute the strength of the church. Once there is no sacrifice, the strength of the church wanes. Mm. Anywhere there is no sacrifice, God can't move. Yeah. Oh yeah, because God is a God that works on sacrifice. That's why in Daniel, the, in the next verse said, they who know their God will offer sacrifice, they will be strong and they will do exploit. That's why people like Daniel were, were daring to enter the lion's den. Mm. Say, we would rather die yeah. than to, to not pray. We were at, somebody we are begging some people to pray. Somebody they say they should not pray. If you pray, we're going to take you to the lion's den. He said, "No, take me to the lion's den. I would rather die than than not pray." But some of us here were saying, "Come for prayer." You said, 30 minutes prayer is too long. <laughs> Five minutes prayer is too much." <laughs> but somebody is ready to ready to die because he wants to pray for hours. Then the lions, when they saw him, the lions said, we are not eating this thing is sacrificed to God. We can't eat what is sacrificed to God. Daniel, <laughs> because it was a sacrifice that entered the lions then. Even fire, when they threw the three Hebrew boys, fire said we can't consume them. Because this is sacrifice to God. Only God can, 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 can take this. He said they pollute the sanctuary of strength when they take away the daily sacrifice. Anything that is robbing you from sacrifice is taking away your strength. Your, our strength is in God. The battles of life are many, but how you win your battle is not through human strength. That's why I say it's not by power, it's not by might. There needs to be on. God on the sea. Say, it's by my spirit. Say the Lord. Amen. You know, in 2 Kings, are you still here? Yes, sir. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26, the Bible says, there was a man, there was a king. He was facing battles. 
they stopped all the wells. Second Kings chapter three, from verse twenty-five to twenty-seven. They stopped all the wells that he dug. They filled. They cut down the trees of his land. They used stone to barricade everything around him. They were just trying to frustrate him. Then, are you there? Yeah. They beat down the cities of and every good piece of land, cast every man's stone and filled it. They stopped the wells of water, fell the good trees. They were just wrecking havoc. How big the, the, the enemy is wrecking havoc in many lives. Many lives. Some life, the devil just go there and beat anything down, anything good. All the good things in the life is spoils it. Spoils your relationship, spoil your life, destroy your children, destroy you know your career. Mess people's life up. Then the man said, Look, then he went, the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore, too strong for him. So he took what 700 men that drew sword to break through and what onto the king of Elon. But what they could not, human strength can never make you what you want to be. Only God can make you what you want to be. Yeah. yeah. He took seven men that 700 men, the, the 700 men to go and break through. They could not. Then what did he do? Then he took his only son whom he had and offered him as a sacrifice. Then all the battles turned back. Then he took what his eldest son that should have reigned in his head and offered him what for a burnt offering upon the world. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. What 700 strong men couldn't do? One sacrifice. When they saw the man took his son that should reign, it, it disarmed them. There is something that you can offer that will disarm every devil in your Amen. life. Yeah. Every trouble of your life. Amen. Oh yeah. The power of sacrifice. The power of sacrifice. You know, in Daniel, it says, they, it says, they that do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. You know why many people don't preach this message? Because people can't do the sacrifice. So I would rather come and jump now and get you to be excited. Hey, jump, the Lord shall bless you. Hey, the Lord shall heal you. Hey, the Lord. You corrupted by flatteries. Flattery, <laughs> no power. <laughs> Next year you come back, you are still on the same spot. <laughs> hey, they prophesy over me. They prophesy lie over you. Wow. Because what you need to do, they didn't tell you. Amen. Because if they tell you to sacrifice, you're going to be offended. Mm. So they will just look at your face and say, oh, is she going to come back next Sunday? So let me tell her now. Receive it! You say, I receive it. You receive nothing. <laughs> because what you need, you have not done it. <laughs> Jesus didn't, didn't receive a name that is above every name by prophecy alone. By his obedient unto death, yeah. even the death of the cross. Was a sacrifice. Amen. You know, in Exodus chapter 5, let me begin to round up. In Exodus chapter 5, the children of Israel were in bondage for many years, and God gave them a recipe for their escape. They were in bondage in, 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 uh, in Egypt for many years, and God said, The way to escape, I'm going to tell you, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that what? That they may hold a feast unto me, what? In the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let you go? I don't know your God. Neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of Hebrews has met with us. Let us go three days, we pray you, into the desert world and sacrifice unto our God. God said, If I want, if you want to go, the key. So breaking free from Pharaoh is when you make up your mind to go and sacrifice unto me. Once you are making a sacrifice for God, there is no devil that can hold you back. No devil in hell, no principality, no power, no witches, no wizard, no force. Nothing can hold you down once you have made a sacrifice for God. Amen. That's the recipe for their escape. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the devil said to them, it's because you are idle. This is where the Lord gave me. This is where the revelation actually came for turn around. Look at verse number six. The Lord, this, then, you know, the Pharaoh commanded the same day, the taskmaster of the people. Someone say taskmaster. Taskmaster. The taskmaster, the spirit of the taskmaster. If you don't want to be under the spirit of taskmaster, you have to make God your master. Amen. 
It's either, yes, a man cannot serve two masters. It's either you have that master or you have God, master. master Jesus as your master. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And the officer are saying, you shall no more give the people straw to make brick as henceforth. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tail of the bricks which they make therefore, you shall lay them upon them, and you shall not diminish off thereof, for they be idle. Therefore, they cry and say, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. You know what people say, Go and sacrifice to God. I'm sacrificing my time. People think you are idle. Yeah. When you say, Oh, I'm going for, you know, when people, when you say people to church, say, Ah, I can't come to church. I, I work on Sunday. There's nothing wrong with work. But give unto Caesar. What to Caesar? I give unto God. What is God? Because the, the, the Pharaoh you are serving, the day is a taskmaster. He will not diminish your labor. He will not diminish your labor. You all know I'm talking about the truth. He will give you more work. Oh, if I get the second job, I will, I will be able to pay all my money. Now you've gotten the second job. You have been told why you've changed. You know, if I do more, if I do more courses, you do more courses, it's like a course. And nothing seems to be changing. But once you understand that Jesus is my master yes, and you make a sacrifice, Amen. you shall be free. Amen. I say you shall be free. Amen. You shall be free. Thank you. you will not die under hardship. Amen. I say you will not die under hardship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's why God told me, he said, look, at the beginning of the year, he said, look, you are in America. I told you that I'm pulling cat by force. I don't know what they have been pulling by force. And it's not coming out. And God said, I'm going to tell you how to make, to have victory in this life. And he told me, he said, the secret is sacrifice. Amen. The secret is sacrifice. In Psalm 126 from verse 1, he said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. Whereof uh, the Lord has done great things for them. Whereof what? We are glad. We also say the Lord has done great things for us. Where we are glad. Say, Turn again our captive as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping bearing what? Precious seed shall doubtlessly come again, bringing his sheaves with him. What will never cease on this earth is seed time and harvest. Whenever you have made a sacrifice, you will come back with rejoicing. Amen. You can never sacrifice and go under. Amen. No. 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 You will always have uncommon breakthroughs Amen. in your life. Amen. When God was going to bless Abraham and swore a blessing on Abraham, God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, take him to Moriah and offer him there as a bond offering. Mm -hmm. Genesis 22, from verse 1 to one, 1 and 2. And then Abraham went to that mountain, and in verse 18, when he offered Isaac, God now began to swear, say, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply. God does not bless emptiness. Amen. You're not hearing me. Your amen is now down. <laughs> you know, one of the things a pastor should do is to show you the total counsel of God. Amen. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, I never shown to declare unto you what? The full counsel of God. So I say the full counsel of God. The full of oh, yeah. God. The full counsel of God. I never shown to declare unto you what the full counsel of God. I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for some years now. I could just make you happy as you go. God does not need anything. Amen. Nothing. Amen. When I'm talking about the sacrifice, God does not need anything. I myself, I don't need anything. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. But we need everything from God. Yes. 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 Can I hear an amen? Amen. So we have to embrace the, the total counsel of God. You know, some people don't preach the complete the gospel. Mm -hmm. They just preach past some, they just tell you what you want to hear. He yeah. said, in the last days, 
Men shall have itchy ears. They just keep themselves teachers to tell them what they want to hear, not what God is saying. Amen. That's what is happening. Oh, when, when this kind of man, I'm here, I'm on Facebook, I'm live all over the world. I'm preaching this to you because that's how, what I live by. Amen. That's what God has revealed to me. Amen. And I can tell you testimonies and testimonies in my life and many things that God has done that were not, that seem impossible. It was on that mountain that God swore a blessing unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. Remember the lady Sarah? I mean, Anna. Anna, the, she and her husband, she keep going to the yearly sacrifice in Shiloh. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. There was a yearly sacrifice. She has been going. <laughs> they just go and have fun. But the year she went, she had been barren, no child. Yeah. But that year she went there and she went and made a vow to God and said, if you give me a male child, I will give him back to you. That same year, that same year, God remembered her and opened her womb. God moves on the sacrifice. Yeah, first Samuel chapter one. You can read it from one to the end. That's why the 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 the, the uh, mockers of you say, will they sacrifice? Let's find out. These people Jews, do they know? Do they know who they are? Would they fortify themselves in God? Will they sacrifice? Yes, we will. Because if they sacrifice, we're in trouble. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we are going to find out, are they going to sacrifice? Amen. I will will they sacrifice? sacrifice? In Psalm 50 verse 5, God says, gather to me, my saints, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Amen. It says, "What well, gather my saints? It's look at it. It says, my saints. God knows, it says, God knows them that are his. There are those who are God's. Say, my saints, what unto me, those what, who have made a covenant with me, what by sacrifice. And he said in the next verse, he says, and God shall be the judge. Amen. Verse 6, quickly. And the heavens shall what, declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. <laughs> Yeah. God is the judge. God is the one. You see, anybody can tell you well done. <laughs> anybody can applaud you. But it is him whom God approves yep. that yeah. have proofs. Amen. Yeah. It is him whom God, that's I told you I said, we don't see God, but we see his acts. Amen. How do we know what God is doing? By the proofs he has given Amen. to you. Yes. By the proofs he has given to you. Jesus, by one offering, he perfected forever those who are sacrificed. David, the man after God's own heart, when there was plague in the land, they say, go, and, the prophet said, go and raise an altar to God. Second Samuel 24. And the man said, take it, everything you want, go and offer. David said, no, I will not offer unto God that which costs me nothing. Because if it doesn't cost me something, I know him. He will not respond. He responds to things that cost me things. He responds to sacrifice. God responds to what? Sacrifice. David said, I will not offer unto God that which cost me. He wants the plague in the land to cease and there is no sacrifice. You have to know God. God is, God is not hiding. God said, I love sacrifice. Let me close with this scripture. Look at our prophetic theme for the year. 1 Peter 2.5. This is our anchor scripture for this year because our build up here. It's all there. Amen. It says, you also what? As lively stones are built of what? A spiritual house. Your spirituality. What is the meaning of your spirituality? Mm. What, when is someone I'm spiritual. A holy priest, what is the responsibility of a spiritual person? I'm spiritual and holy. What makes you spiritual? It's not the tongues you speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not the seriousness of your looks. What makes you spiritual? I say what? To offer of what? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Yeah, what makes a person spiritual is the sacrifice. Amen. Because anything that God tells you to do will cost you something. Oh, look at all the fine ladies around. I say, man, you say, hey, I like that one. I like that one. I say, God say, you must not touch anyone. <laughs> <laughs> say, but I'm single, I'm not married. My body say, hey, no touching. <laughs> Thou shalt not touch. 
before I got married, God said, from now, no, 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 nobody. I said, God, the fire is burning. Hey, <laughs> sacrifice. The weather is cold. God said, no touch. That's, they said, that is, that, that's what makes you spiritual. <laughs> Amen. You see food. You are going back. You are going, you know, last night we closed and somebody said, I'm smelling chicken. And God said, you are fasting for three days. Hey! And your neighbor is frying. You are living next to Popeye's or whatever restaurant. And they are frying. say, hey! You are spiritual. Amen. Oh, you are spiritual. Yeah. You are not spiritual until you can make sure that when you see, you see, you smell you smell the food. Ah! My God. <laughs> you have saved your money. Say, hey, this is my plan. And God said, hey. I want when I, when, I, when the turn around came, I was paid. Watch this. I was paid one fifty biweekly, one fifty every two weeks. When I first came, they paid me one hundred and fifty dollars every two. That was my pay. So in a month, I was earning two fifty. And when I was praying, God said, "You offer sacrifice. You're going to raise an altar." I said, "Thank you, Jesus." Say, "You're going to offer sacrifice to me, and I'm going to come to." You. I said, "Thank you, Jesus." I said, Lord, what would you have me give? Say one thousand dollars. I said, I ended my prayer. My prayer ended. My, that was the end of the prayer. I couldn't pray anymore. One thousand dollars. One fifty, two fifty every month. Two fifty plus two fifty. I was got two fifty plus two fifty is five hundred. Five hundred plus two fifty is seven fifty. That's two more. Two. I, 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 I couldn't pray no more. That was the end of my prayer. That's when you know it's a sacrifice. Jesus was praying and sweating. <laughs> Father, if it is your will, let this come pass over. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's how he got his name. Sacrifice. It must cost you something. <laughs> when I go to the church and I told them, I said, God said to me, we're going to have sacrifice. And I told them, what God told me, 1,000, and God said, yeah, that's it. He said, God said, it's going to make you a thousand times so many more as you are. They told me, chapter 1, verse 11. God wants to make you what? At least a thousand times so many more. Whatever state you are in, God wants to increase you a thousand times so many more. They told me, 1, 11. He said, the God of your father is able to make you what? A thousand times so many more. God is a God of thousands. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one, a hundred is good, but God said, I want to take you to that realm. Mm -hmm. I came and I told the church, God said we're going to sacrifice a thousand. I said, if you can do a thousand, don't take yourself to the level that God put, is taking you to. Don't stop lower. If you can't do it, stay wherever you want. Some, you have to do it. When I told the church, some, some, uh, whatever, People are crying. I said, please cry very well. I've been crying before I came. I was crying. My, my prayer was crying because I'm collecting 150 every two weeks. My month is 250. Now God says I should give 1,000. How many? I uh, mean, uh, 300. So, I mean, after tithes and all that, you, why, why are you saying 300? What do you mean by 300? Am I not going to pay tithes? I'm going to pay tithes. My sacrifice doesn't mean I'm not going to pay tithes. So you have to remove the tithes and I'm going to give offering in church. So what how am I going to live? And my wife is not here then. And I need to, they, are, they are waiting for me to say something. I'm in America, I have to say something back home. <laughs> so I was already crying. So when they were crying, I said, please, cry very well. I came here crying. <laughs> it was a weeping service. So you are laughing about it right now. Somebody might be weeping today and say, I don't know what God will tell you, but if you're going to cry, you're going to need to. As I'm speaking to you right now, I can't give 1,000 anymore because God has blessed me beyond that. Amen. 1,000 will not be a sacrifice for me. Mm. I mean, you might not like it, but that's the truth. That's, that's yeah, because God has blessed me beyond that. I, I can never be, I will never be on the same level I was many years ago. Right. And I'm praying God that He will keep taking me higher Amen. and higher and higher. Amen. Yeah. You see, I didn't have it at that time, but I made a vow that, Lord, I'm going to do it. Be, I, I, it's the first thing is that commitment. Hmm. Many people don't have a commitment. If, Jesus didn't die in Gethsemane, but that was why he said, not my will, but your will be done. That's where you make, you commit. Amen. Today we're going to make sacrifice. Amen. 
And let me also make a disclaimer. If you don't feel God is what, don't have to do anything. Don't, have to do anything. don't be under pressure. Yes, I'm not sir. speaking to you. That means you are not the one. This is not your turn around. Maybe Amen. if you come next year, it might be your turn around. But if this is, you believe God, you want God to build your life up mm. and let his glory be seen in your life, then I will encourage you Amen. to make a sacrifice on this altar of turnaround. Amen. And God will be the judge. He's going to show himself as God in your wow. life. He's going to go ahead of you and fight your battle. Amen. So when the Lord turned again, the captivity was like, who are like them that drink. God will do things in your life. You will be thinking you are dreaming. Amen. Your mouth will be filled with laughter. Yes. Yeah, something happened one of the years. God told my captivity. What I needed most importantly was going to expire for me the 29th of March. That's before my birthday. Because my birthday started of March. If that didn't expire, I'm finished. <laughs> and there was no way it could have happened. But my the thing I was believing for God came on the 29th at that turn around. Mm -hmm. That year was the, the thing God gave us was all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Never forgot. I was rolling on the ground. My wife was some assaulting. <laughs> like crying. Because only God could have done that. <laughs> was so in tears. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but we saw the God. Oh, yeah. Amen. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, give my scripture, the anchor scripture, I'm going to pray. We were like them that dream. Then was our, our mouth with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. We also declare that God has done great things for us. Turn again our captivity, O God, as the streams in the south. Say those that sow in tears, what shall reap in joy? Those who sow, what in tears shall reap in joy? He that goeth forth weeping. Bearing precious seed. Somebody say precious. 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 Uh, not, not anything. Precious seed mm -hmm. shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing. Amen. That will be your portion in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you receive anything from God today? Amen. Give him a big, big laugh. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Give your hands to the Lord. Thank you. God has spoken. God has spoken. Letting the half ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yeah. Shortly from now, I'm going to be provoking you to make that sacrifice. Some of you might have it now, you give it now. You don't have it now. Make a covenant, a vow to God. Say, I'm going to give this within this time. I'm not going to call you out right on your seat, whether in your home, right whether you, wherever you are. On your seat, I'm going to give you a paper to fill. Nobody's ever going to call you for it because you're not sacrificing to me. Amen. It's between you and God. Amen. Our God is a faith God. Amen. We, we, we don't see God, but we relate with him by faith. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you can, make your sacrifice from $1,000. Say, this is my sacrifice. $1,000 above. That make it say, I want to be a thousand times better than I am right now. Yeah. Amen. Above. If you cannot do whatever you can, that's up to you. Amen. But make sure it's a Someone say, if I give a thousand, I'm going to die. Like, but I know you will never die. <laughs> but you will never know what God can do until you believe him. That widow took her last meal and gave to the prophet. She sacrificed it, and the Bible says the abundance is going to pour into our life. Pour into our life. Pour into our life. Do you have that, my song? I want you to just place very gently. I'm going to, you know, encourage you to do that. In your home, some are watching on um, Zoom. Some are watching online, wherever you are. If you want to connect with this grace, anywhere you are, the God of Tolerance wants to build you up. God says, I will build you up, and you shall be built. Amen. Please come and help me give out this from uh, Dickness. Read it. Feel it. There's a portion you can write what you want God to do for you. If you don't feel it, just please fold it back and when we're collecting it, just drop it on the altar. You don't have to write anything if you're not, if you don't think, you know, you need to do anything. Just fold it back and just, you know, gladly just put our paper on, our, on the altar like that. I'm going to be anointing you with oil. We're going to anoint you. We're going to anoint you. We're going to anoint everybody. 
So if you don't feel it, don't bother. Just fold the paper, put it back, and just you know pretend with us like you're sacrificing or going to anoint you. <laughs> yeah, you know. But if you feel and you receive that God has spoken to you, then I want you to act on this. Is it going around? Those of you on Zoom, those of you in your house, send an email to Hoffman.org. There's nothing on the paper other than the commitment we are making. You also register your commitment because commitment must be registered. That's all we're doing. If you have it now, you can do it now. You can go to our website, Hoffman.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org. And you're going to see different options by which you can make your sacrifice. The website is Hoffman.org, H O. F F A N dot O R G. Click the give button, you can do that. But if you want to send an email to register your commitment, you don't have it now, but you have something you can give now as part of it, do it. But the pool has been steered. I want to encourage you to step in and you're going to see the God of turnaround in your life. Then, if you are making a commitment, please write three things you want God to do for you. That if you, if God can do this, I will know that God indeed is alive. Three things. We have those here. And if you want more than three, write. For those of us who have the back, you can feel it front and back. There's nothing too hard for God. But I see God building you up. <laughs> 